Good afternoon. My name is Justin Hahn, and I hope you've all had an amazing lunch because today we're going to be talking about food. <laughs> or more specifically, an essay about food and the role that Korean cuisine has played in my American life. Now, um, your program says that I'm a second generation Korean American, and, um, well, this is true, but sometimes I wonder, you know, what is that exactly supposed to mean? Um, like many parents of this school, um, my parents are of the first generation, that is to say, they uh, immigrated from Korea. Uh, my mother came from the city of Busan at the age of 15, and my father hails from the island of Jeju, which is just off the southern coast of South Korea, and he came with his mother at the age of eight. And the story goes from there. They, um, they worked here, they studied here, they dreamt the American dream, and they lived it too. And um, by the time that I showed up, they had been living in America longer than they had been living in Korea. So as a result, I grew up reading, speaking, and thinking almost entirely in English. And I remember sometimes after school, um, when my classmates would get picked up by their parents, um, their parents would greet them in their own native languages uh, while I was greeted in English. <clears throat> and I wondered um, why I felt some kind of jealousy towards this. And of course, um, family reunions were the worst. Um, you had my cousins, aunts, uncles, all coming from across the ocean. And um, I felt like I was the only person who couldn't speak Korean in the room. And of course, when they told their stories and their jokes, I had nothing more to offer to the conversation than a polite laugh and a smile. And um, whenever I tried to use my own um, very American accented and fragmented um, version of Korean, or attempted to greet them with a stiff and awkward bow, I felt as if I had been caught as an imposter, caught between two cultures. And from time to time I wondered, growing up, you know, was there any hope for this cultural anemia that I felt, this um, unintended side effect of an American dream come true? As I realized, and eventually wrote my essay on, that the only consistent link that I had to my own heritage was the fact that I just, I love the food. Um, <laughs> no matter the circumstances of my birth or my subsequent upbringing, I still know how to enjoy a good Korean meal. And of course, uh, everyone has bad pronunciation with a mouthful of uh, barbecued ribs. So every week or so, my father would take me out to eat at um, one of his favorite restaurants, and these were places where you can get authentic Korean cuisine with recipes that were passed from ancestor to ancestor to a plate that sat waiting to be in front of me. And while we ate, he would often give me some of his own philosophies on life or tell me stories about how he was born in Korea, raised in uh, Trenton, New Jersey, eventually went on to Columbia University and sat behind the desk of his own law firm. And I wrote about one of these dinners um, in my essay, which I'll read to you, an excerpt. We were sitting in my, one of my father's favorite Korean, uh, sorry. We were sitting in one of my father's favorite traditional style Korean restaurants where the menus were printed exclusively in the language of our homeland and the food was as authentic as if my father had made it himself. Japanese eat with their eyes and Chinese eat with their stomachs, said my father in between bites of his cabbage wrap. But Koreans eat with their mouths. <laughs> now, um, in today's world, uh, remarks such as this would um, invite a healthy discussion on the importance of uh, inter-ethnic relations and political correctness. <laughs> but um, to my father, the proof was in the pudding, or in this case, the cabbage wrap. So this tradition of ours continued intermittently until about uh, four years ago when um, my father suddenly took ill and passed away, leaving me, among other things, uh, up a cultural stream without a paddle. Some years later, I was walking home at night on an empty stomach, and I was looking for a place to eat, naturally. And I passed by one of the restaurants that my father used to take me to, you know, when I was younger. And with nothing to do on a Friday night, I decided to go inside. I was certainly not their typical 12 a.m. clientele, which consisted almost exclusively of young Korean professionals and old men united by the clink of rice wine bottles, thick stews, and other traditional hangover cures. Now, um, sitting in a packed Korean restaurant without my father to guide me was already shaping up to be one of those um, awkward nights that I had grown up uh, accustomed to 
Um, I, was, I felt embarrassed that the hostess had to switch from Korean to English just to accommodate me, but I managed to sit down and I thought to myself, you know, something had brought me into that restaurant. And that something then compelled me to order a dish that I was, um, frankly, I had never ordered before. I stepped out of my comfort zone of uh, noodles and Americanized version of Korean barbecue classics to order something that looks a little bit like this. Now, this dish is called uh, posam kimchi, which um, translates quite literally to oyster wrap fermented cabbage. Um, <laughs> as you can see, you have your raw oysters up there, pickled radish over there, um, a nice plate full of uh, pork belly, it's very good. Um, garlic, uh, raw garlic, raw chili peppers, shrimp sauce, and the way you eat it is you wrap it all up into some of that cabbage leaf and um, hopefully get it into your mouth. And um, this is a recipe that um, changes very little over the centuries, um, mostly because uh, half the ingredients are raw. And it was a little <laughs> intimidating for me, um, for good reason, because you know in America we like our food to come nicely packaged, all right? We, we know what to expect. Um, <laughs> we like it to come maybe in a cardboard box with uh, nutrition facts on the side, uh, instructions on how to eat it or something. <laughs> but this was, um, this was the real deal, and there I was. I was sitting there um, with all the other restaurant patrons watching me and myself staring down the biggest and baddest dish on the menu. <laughs> if I was going to prove my current heritage to myself that night, and maybe get a little insight into what my father meant by Koreans ate with their mouths. I knew that I would have to meet this meal head on. I was up a cultural stream without a paddle and from there it was sink or swim. Needless to say, I decided to swim. Gradually with every bite, the dissonant and distinct flavors began to come together in sublime harmony. The acrid taste of the raw garlic was absorbed by the fat of the pork belly, which provided the perfect medium for the saltiness of the shrimp sauce, topped off with a fresh and clean finish from the oyster. To make a long story short, it was delicious, and I finished every last cabbage leaf on the plate. Um, but more importantly, I had learned something about my heritage that a paternal lecture on its own just can't deliver. I learned that Koreans eat with their mouths, their eyes, and their stomachs. They cook with their heart and soul. And I will never have a cuisine that's just so raw, so balanced, and so unapologetically delicious. So, I conclude with a challenge for you all. Go out and try something that you've never tried before. You may learn something about the world, and you may learn something about yourself. And remember that although your name, your face, your family, and your job can all say a lot about you, never let it get the last word. Thank you. Thank you.